Hello everyone. In this video, we'll talk about L-spot assay, which is an immunoassay used to determine number of cells which are secreting cytokines. Now, this L-spot assay captures the presence of a cytokine producing cell in a patient sample, let's say plasma or serum. Now, the assay is very simple and easy to perform. So that is why it is preferable for the medical individuals as a diagnostic tool. The Elispot assay is not limited for cytokines, but also it can be suitable for determining other type of cells secreting certain kind of proteins. And lastly, Elispot assay was actually discovered to quantify immunoglobulin producing cells. So let us look at what is the bits and pieces and what is the principle behind Elispot assay. So Elispot assay is a lot similar to ELISA. So ELISA and Elispot assay has something in common, which is the antigen-antibody interaction. Now ELISA detects antigen or antibody in a patient serum sample or a plasma sample. Now you can understand that Elispot assay determines cytokine secreting cell types present in a patient sample. So this is the major difference between ELISA and the Elispot assay. However, Elispot assay is kind of a modified ELISA, so we need to understand the principle of ELISA before we go to Elispot assay. So here is how ELISA works. This is the basic framework. Using ELISA, you can determine many things. In this case, we are going to look at how we can detect an antibody present in a patient sample. So first of all, we want to check some antigen. We have to coat our wells of microtiter plate with a certain antigen. Then we have to add patient sample which would probably have the antibody. Then if the antibody is present, then after adding secondary antibodies, it would bind to the end of primary antibody. And the secondary antibody is enzyme linked. So a chromogenic reaction would take place and with the development of color, the absorbance value would change. Looking at the absorbance value, the concentration of these antibodies can be calculated. So this is how we can get a quantitative overview in terms of presence of an antibody in a sample. Now let us talk about Elispot assay and how it is exactly performed in the lab. So here is a microtiter plate and we are looking at one particular well of the microtiter plate to understand the phenomena better. So the first step is coating the wells with antibodies against the cytokine to be determined. So let us understand that we want to determine a particular cytokine and we have the antibody against it. So we would coat the well with antibody like shown here. Then we would add the patient sample in that well. Now after adding the patient sample which would have the cells secreting cytokines, they would eventually bind with the antibodies, right? The cytokines which are secreted by the cell would be binding with the antibodies. Then a wash tip would wash away all those unnecessary things and ultimately what we would get after the wash step is only the cytokines bound with them with that particular antibodies which are coating the well. Now step four is to add secondary antibodies which are enzyme linked. After adding secondary antibodies which are enzyme linked, another wash step is performed to remove the unbound substances. Then these Secondary antibodies which are linked with enzyme can ultimately evoke a chromogenic reaction as they are bound with these uh, antigens. That is why we would see specific spot in a microtiter plate. And each of these spot is indicative of a particular cell that is secreting that particular cytokine. We can simply understand it in this way that number of cells is kind of proportional to the number of spots present in the well. So the spot number actually determines the cell density. Let us take an example where there are two individuals, one is candida infected and one is candida not infected. And we want to understand that whether Th17 cells are produced or not. And we know Th17 produce IL-22 antibody, IL-22 cytokine. So we need to do a IL-22 L spot assay. In this case, the wells would be coated with IL-22 and the IL-22 antibody and we would detect the presence of IL-22 in the sample. 
Now it has been seen in the, from this result the candida infected individual and his serum has a hell lot of spots developed in early spot assay. That means his serum indeed has cells which are producing IL-22 cytokines. Now we can also use this to determine viral titers. For example, in case of vir viral infections, we have Th1 product production, Th1 subtype of T cell production. These Th1 type of sub cells are actually inflammatory. So in order to understand the presence of Th1 sample, uh, Th1 cells in a patient sample who was infected by a virus, we can perform several assays. One is L-spot assay. So we can perform IFN gamma L-spot assay. Because we know that Th1 cells, whenever it is produced, they secretes IFN gamma or interferon gamma. So detecting the presence of interferon gamma would indirectly tell us about the presence of Th1 cell. So that is why whenever we do the early spot assay, if we see spots, that means that patient that patient was infected by the virus and now Th1 cells are produced as an immune response. So type of immune response, which type of cells are produced in the immune response, if you want to analyze these kind of questions, early spot assay is one of the best assay. Now overall, we can also compare that how much an individual is in, how much the individual has uh, started an immune response against a viral infection. So here are two individuals. We can see the individual on the left hand side has more spots in the early spot assay. That means strong immune response has been generated in person one compared to person two. And that is why we see more cytokine producing Th1 type of cells in this example. So these kind of comparative analysis can also be done using L-spot assay data. So just to summarize the advantages of L-spot assay, that single cell versus bulk analysis can be done. Individual cell variation is biologically important and that can be done here. L-spot assay is extremely, extremely sensitive. So you really need very less amount of sample, which is important in a clinical setting. Now, L-spot assay also allows a quantitative measurement that is very important. L-spot assay also reduces the sample necessity. That means in, in case many cases, we don't get that much of sample. But as this assay is very sensitive, so it, uh, I mean, it doesn't require a hell lot of sample. So those are the advantages of L-spot assay. And by the way, L-spot assay is also cost effective and widely used in the medical community for these kind of uh, purposes. And especially this is preferred by the immunologist to determine what type of cells are present uh, when a particular type of immune response is augmented. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.